Hello, I am an illustrator. My name is Brandon McDonald, and today I'm going to be showing you a couple new watercolor features and some watercolor brushes in Corel Painter Essentials 7. So first off, the new features are up here on your property bar. You have the option to set the level of diffusion. Diffusion essentially adds soft edges with a paper texture. Then there's the feature called Adjust Wet Fringe. Wet fringe is the edge where pigment settles when using watercolors. So here's what the broad water brush looks like without diffusion, and here's what it looks like with full diffusion. Here's that same broad water brush without diffusion and without wet fringe, and here's what it looks like with wet fringe. You can adjust the wet fringe before and after brush strokes have been made. Up on your property bar, there is an option to freeze the wet fringe. However, if you freeze the wet fringe, you can't interact with those brush strokes anymore. It's as though you've dried the paint. A side note about diffusion, if you aren't seeing the diffusion effect, it's probably because your canvas is too large. Scale down the size of your canvas and you'll be able to see those soft edges and the paper texture. On brush strokes that have wet fringe, you can use the gentle wet eraser to diffuse any wet fringes you don't want. For example, you could quickly go in and diffuse the top edges to make it look like the paint has settled at the bottom, which could give your painting a more realistic look. When you put down a watercolor brush stroke on a new layer, you'll notice that the layer mode changes from normal to gel. This is useful for when you're painting over line work and also for layering paint to get a realistic watercolor look. The coarse water brush is a great texture brush and it has some color variation in it which is pretty awesome. Actually I believe all of the watercolor brushes have a color jitter effect. Meaning, as you use the brush it very slightly changes color. Salt is a cool brush, great for things like stars, snow, or adding texture. Now a cool thing I've noticed is that the watercolors act as their own separate layer within a layer. So, say for example you're just painting in some line work. Well, you use the W key to select the magic wand, click the part you want to paint, and then paint it. And say you've moved on to a different part of the painting, but oh no, you need to go back to that segment you've just painted. But there's no issue reselecting it because the watercolors act as their own layer within the layer. This is cool because any other kind of non-watercolor brush will make reselecting an issue as you can see here. So let's spend a minute painting something with the watercolor brushes. Like I said before, you can press W for the magic wand tool. You can also hold shift while clicking to select more than one thing. To deselect by clicking, you need to hold the Alt key. For the red overlay over the wings, I had to select the entire bat. In order to select the entire bat, using your magic wand tool, select the big white empty background. Then go to your select menu at the top of your screen and click invert selection. You can also press command I. And here's the finished painting with some touch up work. I really hope this video was helpful. If you're good at painting with real watercolors, I'm sure you could make some amazing art with these tools. Thanks for watching.